Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I want to solve the first three questions from AJU Physics 2018 second sessions. You can check link on the description box below if you want to watch the solution for the other problem on this paper, or check my AJU playlist for another paper. Okay, let's start for the first question. In this question, we have string A of length 3L and then string B of length 5L. String A and B are attached to ends A and B of a thin uniform rod of length 4L and the rod is suspended from the two points on the horizontal ceiling A' prime and B'. prime. So basically, you can see the information on the diagram below. We have string A of 3L String B, the length is 5L, and then are attached to a rod of length 4L, and then on the ceiling, the distance between A prime and B prime is 8L. And then another string C is attached to A and pulled in horizontal direction so that the rod rests in the position where the rod is horizontal and string A is vertical. So we have another string C. In this string C, we will give a force. The force is directed to the left horizontally and then at the end, the rod will remain at rest. Let us denote F, the magnitude of the pulling force exerted on A by string C. This is the pulling force. Let us denote this pulling force as F. And then W as the magnitude of gravity acting on the rod. So since this rod has mass, then it has weight. The magnitude of the weight is W. All three strings are lightweight and inelastic. And then the question is, what is F? We want to find F. From 1 until 6 below, choose the correct answer. So our goal is we want to find F. If I want to find F, first of all, I think we need to draw a free body diagram acting on this rod. So if I imagine this is our rod, we have W, which is weight, acting on the rod vertically downward. So I have W here. I also have um, F horizontally to the left. This is F. And then since I have two strings here, that means I have tension of string A. I will assume it as the A. And then we have tension on string B. Let's say this is the B. So basically, this is the free body diagram acting on the rod. You can see here. And then since the rod is at rest, that means sum of the force must equal to zero, and then sum of the moment of force must equal to zero. This is two conditions for an object to be in equilibrium. So, to solve this question, I think we need these two concepts. Let me write down this as TA, and then this is TB, this is F, and then this is W. Since TB is diagonally, I think we need to resolve TB first. If I want to resolve TB, of course, I need to know angle that TB form with horizontal or with vertical. So if I assume this is as alpha, as you can see here, if this angle is alpha, so angle down here is also alpha. Because angle B prime and angle B are alternate angle. So if I assume this is alpha, that means angle that TB 
make with horizontal is also alpha. So this is alpha. Since I know this is alpha, if I want to resolve TB, the horizontal component of TB is TB cos alpha. This one is TB cos alpha. And then the vertical component of TB is TB sin alpha. TB sin alpha. From this free body diagram, first thing first, I will use net moment of force is equal to zero. If I want to find net moment of force is equal to zero, we need to determine the position of the pivot. I will assume this point as a as a pivot. So my first equation is net moment of force at point A is equal to zero. Since T A and F A and T B cos alpha are passes through A, you can see here T A passes through point A. F passes through point A, and then TB cos alpha, if we extend it to the left, is also passes through point A. So, TA, F, and TB cos alpha do not produce any turning effect. So, there are only two forces that produce moment or turning effect at point A, which is W and TB sin alpha. With reference of point A, W will produce clockwise moment, while TB will produce anti-clockwise moment. So, for the net for the net moment to equal zero, moment of W must equals to moment of TB sine alpha. So, moment of W. I can write down minus moment of TB sine alpha is equals to zero. Don't forget the formula of moment of force is force times perpendicular distance. So, moment of W is W times the distance to the pivot. This is 2L. W times 2L minus Moment of TB sine alpha is TB sine alpha times the distance to the pivot, which is 4L. TB sine alpha times 4L is equals to 0. If I divide all the terms by 2L, of course I can cancel out this one. And then from 4L, if I divide it by 2L, it remains 2. If you simplify this expression, I will get W is equals to 2 times TB sin alpha. I got this first equation. And then if I want to find F, I can use the concept or the fact that net force must also equals to 0, since our rod is at rest or equilibrium. Net force is equal to zero. To be specific, I will see from horizontal net force because I want to find F. As you know, F is the horizontal force. So instead of looking at the vertical direction, I will look at horizontal direction. So net force in horizontal direction must equal to zero. As you can see from the free body diagram, there are only two forces acting horizontally, which is F to the left, and then TB cos alpha to the right. F to the left, TB cos alpha to the right. To produce net force equals to zero, F must equals to TB cos alpha. Or I can write down as F minus TB cos alpha is equals to zero. If you see from this expression, I can write down F is equals to TB cos alpha. This is my second equation. 
Since I need to eliminate TB, we do not need TB in our final answer. To eliminate TB, we can divide equation 2 with equation 1. So if I divide it, this one over that one, then I will get F over W is equals to TB cos alpha over 2TB sin alpha. We can cancel out TB here. And then I will get F equals to cos alpha over sin alpha times W. My last question to solve the first problem is what is cos alpha and sin alpha? Of course, you can see from this right angle triangle. If you see from that right angle triangle, we know that this height is 3L and then this side is 8L minus 4L. So this is 3L, this is 4L. Since we have right angle triangle, yeah, of course, string AB or B to B prime is 5L. By focus on this triangle, you can find cos alpha and sin alpha. If I try to find cos alpha, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos alpha is 4 over 5, which is 0 0.8, while sin alpha is 3L over 5L, which is 0 0.6. So my final answer is 0 0.8 over 0 0.6 times W, which is 4 over 3W. Wait a minute, I think I missed something. Oh, sorry, yeah. I forgot to write down 2 here because 4 over 3 W um, is not exist from the choices below. So I think I missed something. And yes, I missed 2 here. So there is 2 here. And I will times 2 here. And then. 8 over 12 W, if you simplify it, you can divide it by 4, you will get 2 over 3 W. Okay, so the final answer is number 5. This is my first question. Let's move to the next questions. For question number 2, we have a train at rest begins moving at t equals to zero. And then travels on a straight railroad. This train travel on a straight railroad. The figure below is a graph showing the relationship between the velocity of the train v and time t. So we have velocity versus time graph and then the question is what distance in meter does the train travel in the time from t equals to 0 to t equals to 6 from 1 until 6 choose the best answer you have to remember one thing to solve this question which is if we are given velocity versus time graph then the distance is the area below the graph. I repeat it once again. If we are given velocity versus time graph, then if you want to find distance, we can see or we can calculate distance by calculating the area below the graph. So for this question, since we want to find the distance, I can simply calculate the area below the graph. Of course, we can divide it into three sections. The first one is a right angle triangle, and then the second one is a rectangle. The last one is a trapezium. The area of triangle for the first section 
is half times base times height half times 3 times 6 and then plus the area of the second section which is um, rectangular the area of rectangular is 2 length times width or times breadth the breadth is 6 so 2 times 6 plus the area of trapezium to find the area of trapezium we can use formula sum of the parallel sides which is 6 plus 4 over 2 times the height of the trapezium which is 1 and then by simple calculation I will get 9 for the first one plus 12 for the second one and then plus 5 for the last one 9 plus 12 21 plus 5 we got 26 meter so the distance traveled by this train for the first 6 second is 26 meter our final answer is number 4 oh uh, yeah number 4 yeah Okay, this is for question number two. Let's proceed to the last question in this video, which is question number three. For question number three, consider a smooth curve surface AB. So AB is a smooth surface. So there is no friction in AB as shown in the figure below. The upper and lower edges of the surface A and B are height H. This is the capital H and then lower case H. So the height of A is H, the height of B is lower case H above the horizontal ground. A small object of mass M are, uh, is placed at A and gently released. That means the initial velocity of the object at point A is equal to zero. I will take notes of this word, gently release. That means the initial speed is equal to zero. And then the object begins to slide down the surface and horizontally jumps off B. And at the end, it will land at point C on the ground. The horizontal distance between B and C is 2H. And then the question is, what is capital H over lowercase h? We want to find the ratio of capital H over lowercase h. To analyze this question, I need to divide it into two sections. The first one is the motion from A into B. And then the, last, uh, the second one is the motion from B to C. Of course, for the motion B to C, we have a projectile or parabolic motion. So when I analyze B to C, I will use the concept of projectile of parabolic motion. Before I analyze B to C, I think I need to find out what is the initial velocity of the object at point B. Remember that the Velocity at point B is horizontally, as shown in this diagram. To find the initial velocity or initial horizontal velocity at point B, we can use conservation of energy between point A and point B. So, the total energy at point A must equal to the total energy at point B. Since there is no frictional force, they tells us that AB is a smooth surface. There is no friction here. So, the only energy at point A is only gravitational potential energy. Remember, the initial velocity or initial speed at A equals to zero. So, at point A, there is no kinetic energy. At point A, the object only has potential energy. 
So GPE, gravitational potential energy at A, must equals to, it will slide down until point B. At point B, it has a speed and height with respect to the ground. So at point B, the object has gravitational potential energy since it has height with respect to the ground and it has initial velocity. I will assume it as U. So the gravitational potential energy at A must equals to gravitational potential energy at B plus kinetic energy at B. As you know, the formula of gravitational potential energy is mgh, mass times gravity times height. The height at point A is capital H. mg capital H is equals to gravitational potential energy at B is mg lowercase h plus kinetic energy it. Uh, at B is half mu square. I can cancel out mass in this expression. Then I will get gh my uh, is equals to g lowercase h plus half u square. This is my first equation. And then. I will analyze the second part of the motion, which is from B to C. From B to C, we have a projectile motion. In projectile motion, we need to analyze horizontal and vertical axis separately. For horizontal axis, there is no acceleration. For vertical axis or vertical direction, the acceleration is equal to acceleration of free fall, which is G. So since I know u, of course you can find u from that equation, and you know the horizontal distance to h, I think I will analyze the horizontal direction first. Horizontal direction. As I mentioned earlier, when we analyze horizontal direction, there is no frictional force. Since there is no frictional force or no other forces acting horizontally, then in horizontal direction, there is no acceleration. That means the speed in horizontal, which is u, is equal to horizontal distance over time. So my equation is u equals to distance, which is 2h, over time. I will keep this equations since I do not know um, how I use this equation. So, leave it there. Next, we will analyze the vertical direction. Vertical direction. When we analyze the vertical direction, uh, we have to focus on the vertical component of the motion. Let's say, um, if I talk about the position at B, since the ball moves horizontally, that means the vertical initial speed is equal to zero. I will write down as Uy is equal to zero. And then the vertical distance or the vertical height from B to C is H. I can use equation H equals to UYT plus half AT square. The height is H and then the initial speed is equals to zero. We can cancel out this one. And then the acceleration since we talk about vertical direction, the acceleration is acceleration of free fall, which is gravity. So, H is equals to half G T squared.
square. This is my third equation. Okay, our last step is we have to combine the first, second, and the third equation to obtain capital H over lower case H. If you see from the option here, the option is a number. So we need to eliminate another variable except capital H and lower case H. If you see from this equation, and I will combine it with that equation, you can see that u is equals to 2h over t. So, from this equation, if I substitute u from here, substitute it into the first one, we will get gh equals to g lowercase h plus half u this one is u squared so you square this expression and then put it there if you square the uh, if you square this expression you will get 4h square over t square so half times 4h square over t square 4h square over t square and then, last thing is we need to eliminate t square. Of course, you can see from this expression, if I cross multiply this 2 to the other side, I will get 2h equals to g t squared. 2h equals to g t squared. That means um, t square is equals to 2h over g t square is equals to 2h over g. If I substitute it here, I will get g capital H is equals to g lowercase h plus cancel out this first 2h square over t square is equals to 2h over g. I think I will write down here 2h over g. Substitute this t square into our last equation. Then I will get 2h over g. If you simplify it, you will get g capital H is equals to g lowercase h. You can cancel out this 2 here. And then you can cancel out 1h here. If you simplify it, you will get h over h over g sorry h over 1 over g i mean since i already cancel out h yeah and then h over 1 over g is g h so plus g h you can cancel out g then you will obtain h equals to to lowercase h then my final answer is 2 the answer is number 4 okay everyone this is it for this video I already solved the first three questions from this past paper hopefully you can understand my explanation Thank you very much for you guys if you watched this video till the end. I hope I see you guys on my next video. Thank you and bye-bye.